Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Snap-on Incorporated, ticker symbol SNA. So we're looking at Snap-on today as a subscriber request. Currently, the business is trading for $246.77 per share. And over the last year, Snap-on is up 21%. This is in drastic contrast to much of the rest of the market. So we wanna analyze Snap-on today to understand what are we missing? What could the market have possibly discovered about this business in particular this year that's led to this kind of outperformance? Over the last five years, Snap-on is compounding their stock price at a rate of about 9% annually. Over the last 10 years, they're compounding their stock price at a rate of 12% annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the last nearly 18 years, Snap-on is compounding its stock price at about 12% annually. Keep in mind that the company also currently has an above average dividend yield and that their average dividend yield throughout this entire time frame would be in addition to these compounded annual returns. Right now, Snap-on has about a 2.4% dividend yield, which is well above that of the yield you'd be receiving from an S&P 500 ETF right now. So Snap-on is currently just $13 below their 52-week high. They're up more than $50 from their 52-week low. Right now, there is a bit of short interest around the business. They have just under 5% of their shares outstanding currently sold short, and Snap-on is a $13 billion company. So for more background about the business, Snap-on manufactures premium tools and software for repair professionals. Hand tools are sold through franchise-operated mobile vans that serve auto technicians who purchase tools at their own expense. A unique element of its business model is that franchisees bear significant risk as they must invest in the mobile van inventory and software. At the same time, franchisees extend personal credit directly to technicians on an individual tool basis. Snap-on currently operates three segments, repair systems and information, commercial and industrial, and tools. The company's finance arm provides financing to franchisees to run their operations, which includes offering loans and leases for mobile vans. The company serves the aviation and aerospace, agriculture, infrastructure construction, government and military, mining, natural resources, power generation, and technical education industries. Snap-on Incorporated was founded in 1920 and is headquartered in Kenosha, Wisconsin. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist-style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Snap-on based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still an evolving process and it's a work in progress, so it really serves as an opportunity to learn in public, and it's going to continue to improve proving it better over time. So with that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. And the second is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are gonna be captured here by return on capital. So by asking for that 14% benchmark or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. So Snap-on has earned above average returns on capital in all five of these years, their lowest returns on capital came at the end of their fiscal 2021. That encompassed most of the calendar year for 2020, and it looks like the company's fiscal year ends on the final working day of each of these years. So things do look a little off here for their 2020 and their 2021 numbers, although they're all going to be captured on ticker. So in their most recent fiscal year, Snap-on earned a 21% return on capital and averaged out over this period, Snap-on's average return on capital is about 20% annually. So Snap-on's average return on capital is solidly above that 14% benchmark. This is a check here on metric number one, and their average return on capital is nearly three times better than that of a typical business. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over these last five years. This metric is gonna be all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are gonna be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. So over this period, Snap-on has grown their revenues moderately. They've grown their revenues by about 20%. Additionally, their earnings are up by slightly more than a third, so their earnings have grown by 34% over this time frame. However, the business is going to fall short here when it comes to their free cash flows, as over this time frame, Snap-on's free cash flows have declined by 12%. When we look at the company's cash flow statement, we can really see that the majority of these changes are coming from two items. This is because of changes to their accounts receivable and then changes to their inventories. So 
this has not been uncommon. We've seen this for a number of businesses over the last fiscal year, and overall this resulted in lower cash from operations for the business, also having slightly higher capex than they had in some of their previous years. This has led to a moderate decline in Snap-on's free cash flows over the last five years. So this means that this is gonna be an X here on metric number two. Ideally, we wanna see growth from a business's free cash flows because free cash flows are really the lifeblood of any business. And ultimately, a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate, is what that business is gonna be worth. So a business can use its free cash flows to buy back stock, pay dividends, pay down debt, make acquisitions, or reinvest back into the business. So even though their revenues or net incomes were up, it's not great that their free cash flows are down. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Snap-on on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. In our previous metric, we learned that their earnings are up by a little more than a third over this time frame. However, we also want to look at what they've done in terms of their shares outstanding. Likely a strong sign for long-term shareholders in the business, Snap-on has repurchased around 5.5% of their shares outstanding over their last five years. So this is important because when you purchase a share of stock, which you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. And so when a business buys back shares by decreasing the number that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business, which is ultimately going to increase the percentage of the business's profits that you're entitled to without you having to spend a dime. So it's almost as if the company is making a partial acquisition of itself. And so just like with any other acquisition, we want a company to be getting more value than the price that they're paying. So practically, we want companies that are buying back shares when they're trading for below their intrinsic value and it looks like an attractive use of their capital relative to some of their other business opportunities. So between these share buybacks and modest earnings growth for Snap-on, this has led to strong earnings per share growth for the business. And so this is a check here on metric number three. Next up for metric number four, here we're looking for something similar. So we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. Again, we previously learned that their free cash flows are down over this time frame. So with their free cash flows being down, but the company buying back their shares, the numerator and the denominator in this free cash flow per share equation is going to be especially at odds here. Unfortunately, their free cash flow declines have outpaced their share buybacks, and so their free cash flows per share are down over this time frame, meaning that this is an X on metric number four. In their most recent fiscal year, Snap-on produced $11.11 worth of free cash flow for each share that they've had outstanding. And so to recap where we stand currently, through our first four metrics, we have two checks and two Xs for Snap-on, so we're split evenly. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing leverage. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are going to be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. We want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced over their last five years. So Snap-on has been reducing their net debt position over this time frame. Currently, they have about $512 million worth of net debt, and even though they're their free cash flows have declined slightly over this period. The company still produced $591 million worth of free cash flow in their most recent fiscal year. So even with their declines in their free cash flows, they'd still be able to pay off their entire net debt position with only one year's worth of their current free cash flows. So this is a big check here on metric number five. As relative to the debt that Snap-on is employing in their business, it looks like the company is massively cash flow generative and Snap-on has produced $3.3 billion worth of free cash flow over their last five years alone. It would seem like based off the company's free cash flows and their balance sheet that Snap-on is in a pretty healthy position here. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this may provide us a reasonable starting point for evaluation of Snap-on, and it'll likely provide a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. So we learned in our previous metric that Snap-on has produced $3.3 billion worth of free cash flow over the last five years, meaning that in an average year, the company is producing about $735 million worth of free cash flow, and currently Snap-on has a $13.6 billion total enterprise value. So we're using their total enterprise value because it takes into account both the company's market cap and their net debt position. And it's going to give us a perspective of Snap-on as a business that's going to be more similar as if Snap-on were a private company. So when we divide their $735 million of their average free cash flow by their $13.6 billion total enterprise value, that gives 
gives us just under a 5.3% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for Snap-on. So that's slightly above that 5% risk premium that we're looking for here, meaning that this looks potentially attractive relative to the yield of the 10-year treasury and that this is going to be a check here on metric number six based off Snap-on's average free cash flows over the last five years. It is worth being aware that their free cash flows are down in their most recent fiscal year. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $591 million of their free cash flows in their most recent fiscal year by their $13.6 billion total enterprise value, that is only going to give us about a 4.2% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. So that is down and that's below that 5% risk premium, but that's still slightly above the yield of the 10-year treasury. Even still on an average and a current basis, we're split here on Snap-on. And while this is a check here on metric number six, keep in mind that this is just one of our six metrics and that this analysis is not financial advice. Just because this is a check here doesn't mean that you're going to run out and go buy the business. Instead, this analysis is meant to be taken in holistically. And while these metrics are simple, when they're combined together, they can be very powerful. And before we get to the end of our analysis, we've still got a few more interesting things to cover about the business. So as a bonus here, we're taking a look at Snap-on's dividend profile. So Snap-on currently pays out a 2.4% dividend yield, which again is better than the yield that you'd be receiving from an S&P 500 ETF currently. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends. So it's important to stop and look at the underlying fund fundamentals of a business like we've been doing, and to look to see whether a company's dividends are well supported by their free cash flows or their earnings, depending on the type of business. For Snap-on, we want their dividends to be well supported by their cash flows, and that's been the case in all five of these years. Snap-on has grown their dividend in all five of these years as well, and even with a decline in their most recent fiscal year of free cash flows, the business still is very easily and very comfortably able to support their dividend payouts. And so it looks like Snap-on's dividend over the last five years has been in pretty good shape and that it's potentially looking pretty healthy going into the future as well. However, keep in mind that past performance is no guarantee for future results here. Then everything we've covered so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Snap-on, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for Snap-on. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with an average of their free cash flows over their last three years to give us a more normalized perspective of the business's ability to produce free cash flows. Then we're using historical growth assumptions based off of how Snap-on has grown their free cash flows dating back all the way till 1990 in order to give us a baseline projected estimate over the next 20 years for the business. So it's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable going forward for the business. But if we assume that Snap-on can grow their average free cash flows at a rate of 9% annually for the next 10 years. And then we assume that that growth rate gets just about cut in half over the next 10 years out after that. If we were to add in the company's tangible book value, which gives us a perspective of the tangible net worth per share that the company has. And if we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return that Warren Buffett is ideally looking for from his investments, in addition to his margin of safety requirements, depending on the dynamics of the industry and the durability of a business's competitive advantage then it looks like from today's valuations of Snap-on that a potential fair value for the business is right around $224 per share. So while that is down $22 from Snap-on's current stock price, that's well within the range of where the business has traded within the last year. Keep in mind that this is just an estimate and there are some caveats that you'd want to take into account here. One is that this 15% rate of return would be outpacing how the business has performed slightly over the last 20 years. It also would be including their 2.4% dividend yield. So we would not not be doubly counting their dividends. Also, very importantly, is that a discounted cash flow model is really based off the predictability of a business's future free cash flows. S Snap on has seemingly had a very high degree of business predictability in its past, but again, that's not necessarily a future guarantee for the company. And so please be mindful of the fact that this type of analysis is not financial advice, it's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professional. Professionals. So in just a minute, we'll talk about our summary for the business, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of Snap-on's business, especially those that support the key points for either a potential long or a potential short thesis of the company? So starting with some of the key points around a potential long thesis for Snap-on, number one, 
sales representatives can add new customers on their designated service routes, increasing revenue per franchisee. Number two, auto manufacturers continue to tap Snap-on to create new tools and products to service new EV models. This alleviates concerns that EV adoption will threaten Snap-on's viability. And number three, the growth in vehicle miles driven increases the wear and tear on vehicles, calling for more maintenance and repair work to keep them on the road, benefiting Snap-on. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis of the business, number one, Snap-on's peers could increase the quality of their tools and products, putting pressure on Snap-on's pricing power. Number two, the high growth potential of diagnostic sales due to increased EV adoption could attract more competitors to contend with Snap-on. And number three, the ease at which individuals can order products online today could spur technicians to buy more tools from e-retailers. In addition, online reviews may help technicians close any knowledge gap as they're comparing which product to buy online. Hopefully that offers a balanced perspective around some of the key qualitative aspects of the business. Now it's time for our wrap up. So in summary, Snap-on checks the box on four out of our six metrics today, meaning that the business is strongly attractive for future research. Snap-on earns average returns on capital that are nearly three times better than that of a typical business. They've grown their revenues and earnings over the last five years. However, their free cash flows are slightly down. At the same time, the business has bought back about five and a half percent of their shares outstanding. Even though the business's free cash flows have declined somewhat over this time frame, it looks like Snap-on is massively cash flow generative relative to the leverage that they're employing in their business. While the company does look like it's potentially attractive and may be potentially offering a risk premium based off their average free cash flow to enterprise value yield and comparing that to the yield of the 10-year treasury, it looks like the business is just slightly below that threshold we were looking for for a slight risk premium when we were looking at the company's current free cash flows. So that's on either side of that risk premium for their average and their current free cash flows. Even with the business's free cash flows being down over this time frame, it looked like their dividend profile was in healthy and sustainable shape, and Snap-on has grown their dividend by quite a bit over the past five years, but they've been able to maintain a healthy dividend payout ratio throughout. Then finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Snap-on. If you've done the work and you believe that those historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable for the business going forward over the next 20 years, then from today's valuations, if you were seeking a 15% rate of return for Snap-on, it looks like a potential fair value for the business is right around $224 per share. So again, there are some caveats to be mindful with that. And so it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Snap-on. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can tailor your reading experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 119 bucks. That's just 33 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but if you use my link, it's 50% off. So check it out if you're interested. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct this research as if you're going to own 100% of a business and you can truly understand the ins and outs and understand what's important and what's not important for Snap-on as a business. Learning about the business accurately, completely, and then going back and asking yourself, what did you miss in order to come to the underlying essence of the business? So through this deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of Snap-on, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for Snap-on will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Snap-on Incorporated, ticker symbol SNA. Again, we looked at the business today as a subscriber request. 
And with the business checking four of our six metrics on our analysis, it looks like Snap-on is a strong candidate in terms of its attractiveness for further research into the business. So I'm happy to make an analysis of the business. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Snap-on with me and have a great day.